Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about Z3, which is some of the coolest software I have ever encountered. Um, and I don't really know how it works, but I'm going to show you a few examples of it. The, uh, so what Z3 is, is it's a theorem prover. This seems a little bit nebulous, uh, but the basic idea behind it is you describe a system to Z3 using a little bit of code and it will magically find the answers. <laughs> uh, so you, you don't even need to know how to solve a problem. You can simply describe a problem in the terms that Z3 understands, and it will tell you first off whether that problem is satisfiable or not, and then it will spit out the answer. Uh, and I'm gonna walk you through a kind of silly example of Z3 that I used recently to reverse engineer a uh, chat command in a Twitch channel that I was watching. Um, let me just demo that chat command to get started. It's Pokemon related, but um, there's this special Pokesona command in this chat where if you ask what your, your Pokemon is, it will deterministically, deterministically pick a Pokemon for you. So I am a Nosepass, which, oh, uh, Nosepass is kind of boring. <laughs> well, Nosepass is kind of cool, but I was wondering what would I have to change to not be a Nosepass? Like what username could I pick, for instance, to be... I don't know Umbreon over over here. <laughs> what what could I what could I be instead? Um, and so I got the I happened to get the Nightbot code for the actual um, the actual um, command there, and I'll show you how I reverse engineered it. So we're gonna start with that uh, little JavaScript here to get started. Um, I'm gonna tab this out because it's kind of hard to read. Turns out there's a bunch of dead code in this command, so we'll be uh, Eliminating that really quickly as well. Um, and then I'll show you how I translated it into C3 to describe the problem and then how I went about, you know, getting <laughs> getting eventually the answer. Um, so there's there's a few things in here that are uh, not needed. Uh, first off, there's two of these URL fetches here. Uh, this first one is a list of Pokemon, which I have helpfully... Um, hopefully already downloaded and put into this JavaScript file here so we don't have to do that. Uh, and this one, this one's just unused. <laughs> we look for the T variable, this is the only use of it. So we can get rid of that really easily. Uh, we can do Pokemon, uh, cause Pokemon equals require Pokemon.js. I'm not a JavaScript developer. I know this is the old way to do it, but this is the only way I could get it working <laughs> in my little demo. Uh, the other thing that we notice here is A is accessed but never used, so we can just get rid of that. Also, A is a parameter here, but it's immediately reassign reassigned to the user. Uh, so we can either, I, I think what we're going to do is take the username as a parameter. So we did Anthony writes code here. Um, and then after that, it's really just building up this little checksum here based on the character code of things. Uh, then it's using the Pokemon here. Also don't care about that. And we're just gonna return this little bit of math here. And we've kind of simplified the problem down to just the, the bits we care about. Uh, okay, it's Pokemon, Pokemon dot link. Cool, so now if we run this, in theory, if I did everything correctly, pokesona.js, okay. Uh, wait, why did it just give me back my username? That's not what I wanted. Uh, oh, because I didn't call the function. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know how to write code. Okay, cool. So you can see that we've we've simplified down and reproduced the original Pokesona command. Uh, my thought was, what if I could find usernames that landed on Umbreon, for instance? And if we Pokemon equals require, uh, well, actually, we can just figure out what this number is first off. Um, let's just console.log that. I think it's off by one from the actual Pokemon number. So if we do this, oh, get rid of the square bracket and that back, uh, and we run again. Okay, 298. I believe NosePass's number is 299. Maybe NosePass. Yeah, 299. Okay, so we need to find uh, the one that's Umbreon's number. We Umbreon. I don't remember the number of this one. 197. Okay, so we're looking for 198 as our answer. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's start working with Z3. So to do that, I'm going to set up a virtual environment. And I'm actually going to switch screens here. 
and I'll click this up here. And we are going to pip install, I think it is z3-solver is the package. Yeah. Pip install z3-solver. Z3 has bindings in a whole bunch of different programming languages. Um, it's often used to do constraint solving and like package managers and you know, all sorts of other stuff because Z3 is, is magical and like that. Uh, but the way, and I'm going to be cheating, I already wrote the code before, so I'm going to be kind of re-walking you through how I would write that code. Uh, we're going to have our t.py. So Z3 has a whole bunch of ways to describe variables, and the one we're going to be using today is int. We are going to be using an optimizer. There's also a solver and a... I forget what the other one's called. Um, but I find optimized to be the fastest to run because it just picks the, the lowest solution. Uh, I, I also don't know much about Z3 internals, so this is just my experience from working with it. I've also used Z3 in the past to solve advent of code problems where I just like don't know the algorithm. I can just describe the system to Z3 and it just spits out the answer. Um, and lastly, we're going to check whether something is satisfiable, so we need to import sat as well. Now, what I wanted to do is figure out usernames of various links that would result in a particular Pokemon. And naively, I could do this by just generating all the possible usernames. Uh, but you could imagine if I generated, you know, even length seven, uh, that's 26 to the seven and quite a lot of strings. And I would have to check every single one and run it through this algorithm and see if we got the right Pokemon. Or I would have to, you know, figure out a way to sieve these out and like do a bunch of math. and. I wasn't interested in doing any of that. I was uh, much more interested in just you know, writing a little bit of code and having Z3 solve that entire idea for me. Um, but I wanted to see like, if I could pick um, usernames of, of varying lengths, what would I end up with? So uh, for length in the range, I don't know, from like five characters to 15 characters or something like that. Can I find some answer here? And we're going to make an optimizer. Uh, let's call it opt. <laughs> this is bad. Now I'm changing the variable names from my actual code. Uh, and so the optimizer is kind of the system, and we're going to tell the optimizer about all of the constraints of the system. Uh, now Z3 works with integers, and our strings are going to be characters. However, we can kind of think of them as integers because we're just we're summing up the entire um, series of characters here. So what I'm going to do here is add uh well, you call the add method to add things to the optimizer um, and just to kind of show you a very simple example uh import z3 uh, oops we need to actually be in the virtual lab import z3 opt equals z3 dot optimizer optimize uh, op dot add z3 dot int. Uh, let's say x uh, is greater than five. Uh, and we can say op dot minimize uh, z3 dot int x, and then we would say opt dot check. This will tell us whether it's satisfiable or not. Of course, this is a very silly example. We're just saying x is greater than five. Um, and then we can say op.model to get us a result. <laughs> and you know it, it can solve that x is equal to six. This is a very, very simple example. We're gonna making we're gonna be making a much more complicated one. Okay. Um, so the way I wanted to represent strings is one integer per character. And this is essentially just summing those up. So at the end we're gonna have a sum, and that sum is gonna go through this bit of math here, figure out the answer. Um, and how many Pokemon are there? <laughs> I should really know this. <laughs> Node Pokemon equals require Pokemon dot uh, uh, Pokemon dot length. 898. <laughs> okay. So we are 898 Pokemon. And we are looking for uh, 197. 97 is Umbreon, which will be index 198. Okay, cool. All right, so we're gonna represent our uh, characters as integers. So we can just say ints equals a list here. Oops. And we are going to, uh, for this length here, create integer variables for each character. So we're gonna say for 
apply in range length. Uh, we're going to uh, make an integer, or we can call it j. Uh, actually, we'll call it i. <laughs> Equals int, and we're just going to name these variables. We're basically having, uh, actually, call them like x. Doesn't matter what you name them. Uh, just needs to exist in the Z3 namespace to understand those are variables. And we are going to add constraints to these. Uh, we know that the character is going to be within the character codes that are allowable. So if we say or the A, that'll be the minimum, and or Z will be the maximum. So we can just say that int i is uh, greater than or equal to or the A. And we can say that int i is less than or equal to or z. Now we have a series of integers and we're going to append those to our list. Ins.append int i. So that's representing just our string. We have a string. It's a bunch of integers. Uh, next we want to represent that there is a sum of these and this sum has to equal that particular value that we're looking for. And so we can just say that, uh, that we have a sum variable. Uh, sum variable equals int sum, and we will tell our optimizer that uh, sum v is equal to the sum of all of our integers. You can just use them as if they're numbers. They're not actually numbers. They're these special int types, but Z3 translates this magically behind the scenes to be a, an, as, a, you know, an equality assignment here. Uh, we also want to tell it that this little bit of math is true. So we want to say that the sum plus 244 modded by uh, 898 is equal to 198. So we're going to say opt.add sum v plus 244 uh, modded by 898 uh, plus 1 is equal to 197. Wait, no, minus 1. Yeah. Uh, so this is the umbergon number that we're looking for. Oh. I type out this 898. And so that should give us a, uh, a constraint that we're looking for. Uh, next, we need to check whether that is satisfiable or not. So we can do that by saying, um, oh, actually, we need, to, <laughs> we need to make sure that order of operations are preserved. So we do need to parenthesize this, I think. Eh, maybe not. But next, we need to check whether it's satisfiable. We can do, do opt.check. This will either say satisfiable or not. And we can say, if it is satisfiable, that means we have found an answer. Let's actually just run this real quick to make sure I haven't screwed anything up so far. Uh, like, oh, we can use my new linting feature. Look at that. <laughs> uh, there we go. You can see that we have found two answers within the range of five and 15 characters. Uh, but let's figure out what those actually are. And for that, we can do, uh, we can get our model out by doing opt.model. And we can convert those integers, which will be inside this model, uh, by indexing these into a string. <laughs> I'm just going to copy paste the line for this because it's kind of complicated. <laughs> uh, model t, this t, t is integers. Yeah. This will uh, grab the value out of the model. It will convert it to an integer. Uh, this was originally written for Python 2, so as long is actually just the same as as integer. Then we are going to convert it back into a character, and then we're going to join it across all of our integers. This will allow us to find um, two examples. Uh, can I reopen that chat window? Uh, .tv slash interesting slash chat uh, focus on uh, this string here and oh we're off by one <laughs> we ended up with slow king uh, let's do plus one instead and run that again this one should be the right value right Umbreon, cool, we got the one we were looking for. So I, I didn't know anything about you know, how this, this actual math and, and sieving works here, but I was able to find, you know, <laughs> find several answers that would have given me uh, Umbreon. Now I'm not gonna change my username to these because that would be kind of silly, uh, but it's kind of cool. 
Uh, anyway, that's kind of the power of Z3. I also wanted to show you a advent of code solution, which is maybe a little bit more approachable and less, you know, special mathy. Um, this one comes from 2018. I also believe I used it in 2020 to solve something as well. I also used it in 2019. Uh, but 2018 was the first time I, I learned about Z3 and followed a tutorial and learned stuff about it. Uh, but the problem in Z3 was this like extremely complicated collision detection. This is my uh, collision detection code where I implemented it without actually, <laughs> without actually just cheesing it with Z3. And this is so complicated. And I'm pretty sure there's a typo somewhere in here because I don't think it ever actually worked. Uh, but this was my attempt at making um, octahedron collision uh, but i didn't actually get that working properly uh, so i instead tried to attempt it using uh, z3 and this is essentially the z3 code here uh, i basically just represent the bots as coordinates and i compute whether they are within range of each other uh, by using i had to cheat a little bit and use absolute value uh, i found this in the z3 docs this is a nice way to um, convert a, a, an expression into being positive or negative. I basically say there's a whole bunch of bots and uh, try and maximize the number of bots that are in range and minimize the distance. And I'm basically able to just pick the bot that, that does that and spit out the answer. I didn't really know anything about how to, <laughs> well, I, I did learn how to collide octahedrons, but not super successfully. Uh, but I was able to just, you know, describe the problem to Z3 and have it just spit out the answer, which is just so mind-boggling and cool. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to show you guys Z3 and and kind of maybe you'll maybe it'll spark some ideas on stuff you can use it for. Uh, but anyway, hopefully you found this interesting. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.